Good evening, everyone. My name is Michelle DeMarzo. I'm the museum's curator of education and academic engagement. And it's my pleasure to welcome you to another quick sessions event focused around our exhibition, Birds of the Northeast, Gulls to Great Ox. If you haven't had a chance to visit our website and explore the virtual tour and the audio guide, the YouTube playlist of bird sounds, read our catalog, I encourage you to do so. Our website is fairfield.edu slash museum slash birds of the Northeast. And if you're watching today from Connecticut or from the Northeast, you know that today has been our first sort of uh, seasonably warm day, a sign that spring is coming and the birds are out there chirping. So it's perfectly apropos that we be celebrating that by inviting one of Fairfield University's studio art professors to guide us through a workshop on drawing birds. So our speaker this evening is Suzanne Shamlin. She is Associate Professor of Studio Art in the Department of Visual and Performing Arts here at Fairfield. Her ink and ink wash drawings are in the collections of the National Gallery of Art, the Yale University Art Gallery, and the Nelson Atkins Museum. And she has attended residencies at the Joseph and Annie Albers Foundation, Yaddo, and the Virginia Center for the Creative Arts. Suzanne received a BA from Barnard College and an MFA in painting from Yale University. And Suzanne had asked me to make clear to everyone that she, like me, is not an expert in birds. She is, however, a gifted and talented professor and artist, and we're excited to have her advice in bird drawing this evening. Uh, after her demonstration and discussion, I'll come back on and we'll discuss any questions you all might have, as long as they are about drawing and not necessarily about birds. We may not be able to answer those. We'd have to pass them off to our biologist colleagues. But I'd like to invite everyone watching, if you're drawing along, if you would like to send your artwork to museum at fairfield.edu, we would be pleased to feature it on our website for the bird exhibition. And if you are a Fairfield University student and you send us your artwork by this Friday, uh, Professor Shamlin will judge the submissions and we'll be awarding Dunkin' Donuts gift certificates. So again, our museum at fairfield.edu is the email address. And without further ado, please join me in welcoming Professor Suzanne Shamlin. Thanks so much, Michelle. Good evening, everyone. I'm so pleased to be here with you tonight. And um, thank you so much for inviting me to, to, to draw and to give a workshop on, on drawing birds. Um, this is my first time really thinking about birds as subject matter. Um, I've mentioned this to Michelle before, and so I'm a, I'm a novice at it. So I want everybody to feel comfortable to draw along and to know that um, a bird is, um, you know, it's a subject that has been painted a lot, but it's, um, it's doable. So um, I wanna show first some slides of, um, of paintings that I selected to look at, and then we're going to have a look at two to, um, to draw from tonight. So um, this is um, a watercolor um, or a print, I should say, um, by John Gould. Um, and so I, I sort of went through and just chose some, some uh, images of birds that I thought were really very special, both in terms of the way the color was used and also the shapes and really the appreciation um, for birds. And these images are all on ArtStore and that's where I collected them from. ArtStore is a digital database that um, you can um, that you can go into and, and look for these images. So here's a, an, a, a piece by John James Audubon. And I just love the um, sort of interaction of the shapes and the way that you see the, the leaves and the um, what's really negative or interspace, like the shape right in here that's between the leaves and between the bird right here, I think is so important in drawing. And so those are some of the kinds of things that we'll, we'll focus on tonight. Here's another Audubon, um, Anna's Hummingbird. Can you hear me okay? okay. Um, I love this um, simple um, 
very minimal um, piece by James, John James Audubon, sort of in 1785 to 1851 when he, when he lived. There's another Audubon. Entitled. Okay, so this is one of the, the paintings that we're going to, the, the drawings I should say, that we're going to look at um, today together. And although I didn't find the bird in here, I found they said insects, so I see the bumblebees, but it was so um, special. Let's see if I can make this a little bit bigger and so great with spring coming that I decided to keep it in. Um, and then also this um, painting, this watercolor I think is so minimal and um, uh, the artist says so much with so few strokes. And that's something that I particularly admire about this piece as well as this piece as well. Um, they're both um, by a Japanese artist named Seiti, 1851 to 1918 is when he lived. Another hummingbirds, another artist, Reichenbach. I found a turkey when looking, while looking. <laughs> I just love the um, the detail of this of this drawing, and then Chardin um, painted this musical instruments and parrot. So I thought that was very interesting that there's a parrot in this painting. Would have been an oil paint, and um, some more birds. Okay, so I think we're gonna turn now our attention to, um, let's see, I'll, I'll just go back and I'll, I'll put two on the screen and I'm gonna show you how I started to think about, um, about drawing the birds. And then um, after that, um, I'm gonna show a quick PowerPoint and you can start to get your materials and we can draw along together. So let's see, let me go back here and I'm gonna select this one. Make it larger, yes. And let's see, the compare is right here. We're not really comparing them, but it's the feature that allows us to see two. What if we, Jesus. There. Okay, so one is by, um, Giovannino, Giovannino de Grassi, and the other is by John Gould. The one on the left is Giovannino de Grassi. Okay, and so um, so I think that one thing that will be helpful for us as we're drawing is to think about the idea, um, like if you're looking at the, the, the drawing on the left, which um, here's a, um, an, my interpretation of the drawing on the left. Um, what I did was I took a, you can either take a ruler or you can take a straight edge, like an index card or anything, piece of paper. And you can um, start by looking at the angles that the birds are on and just even drawing a line. So what I did was I just sort of drew a line going that way. And then the same thing for right here, drew a line going this way. And then the other thing that um, is, I think really helpful is, is sighting, which is really, it's the same thing. It's finding angles, um, using your pencil to find the angles that the birds are, that you see the birds are, are at. The art where you know the angle at which the artist put the birds, and then the other part would be to find how big and small, like how how large is the the middle part of this bird relative to the length of the whole bird. So using your pencil, sort of as a measuring stick, um, we can if you hold your arm out, 
and place your pencil at the, the top of the pencil, say as an example, if I wanted to measure the height of this bird from here to here, if I place my pencil straight out, and then if I wanted to compare the height of this part of the bird to the height of this part of the bird, which, which is this big, the bird on top is bigger, then I will see that my thumb would need to come down to increase the, the size of the bird on the left because this bird is smaller. So it's a way to compare and contrast um, the size of, of the birds. So you could also, for example, you could also um, measure the width of the bird relative to the height by placing your pencil as a measuring stick here and keeping your thumb in its right here and then turning it this way. And I can find out that this is about the same size as this. Um, so from going from here to here, from the head down here is about the same size as this. So those two, um, simple ideas, which are actually, they sound simple, but they're, they're a little bit more challenging to do, but you can, I think they're really helpful. So we're gonna think about angles and then also proportion, how big and small, and then placement. So I think that it's really interesting um, to think about the idea that for instance, between here and here is the same width as say from here to here. So where in relationship to this bird is this bird and this bird to this bird? And then you get sort of like a geometry happening in the painting. So I think that that's something that, um, that I like to think about when I'm drawing. And also of course the details um, of both the shape and also the color. Um, and here there's not, there's not any color, but the second painting that I did, whoops, in here um, of the second of the John Gould or an interpretation, start to have a little bit of color in there. And so for everybody joining in who has a kit where you're working from with materials, watercolor or watercolor pencil, feel free to you know, join in with using the color. And then the first one is right here. So um, why don't we now, we're gonna take a look at a, a PowerPoint and you can go ahead and please, I welcome you to get your materials and get comfortable. And it really, drawing is really, um, it's really about seeing, in my opinion, we're drawing from observation. I mean, there's so many ways that, that birds can be interpreted and I just love the subject matter of birds. I think I may continue to draw birds after this um, because I love the idea that they're so free. And I was thinking that even just, you know, using your own freedom of your arm without feeling that you have to, you know, compelled to um, draw exactly what you see is just a, a totally other approach, which might have, you know, it's more Zen-like to just really echo, <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> excuse me, echo the sort of freedom and the shape that you that you sense, of course, because, you know, we, we're looking at pictures, we're not looking at the birds um, themselves. So let's see, so I'm just gonna um, go out of here. And then we can go like that. And so, yeah, so I join you, so I welcome you to go ahead and get your, your supplies and start to set up and start to draw and um, just gonna, while you're doing that and getting comfortable and thinking about the idea that drawing is really um, about um, just seeing and, and I moving your hand to what you see. Um, here are some close-ups of the bird that I um, worked on from the um, Giovannino de Grassi painting. Um, and I liked, you know, looking at this shape in here and it has color in it, these paintings. So the next step would be to work with some watercolor. Um, this is um, a Picasso and, um, you know, Picasso, it's a famous Picasso's dove for the peace movement. He, he created it um, in 1949 um, as a poster. Um, and his fourth daughter, Paloma, 
Um, paloma means, means dove in Spanish. And so here I just have, um, it's just a demonstration of what I, I was talking to you about. So if you notice here, the arrows are, the, are in green. This is um, the horizontal top of the page. This is the vertical right of the page. And I put yellow sticker, yellow post-its really here to indicate that these are the angles that the birds are on. So the sighting, you can use your pencil to find out the angle um, or the yellow post-its are also showing the angle. So the pencil as a measuring tool, you know, how, how tall is this bird relative to, relative to this bird? Um, measuring the base or the, the middle of the bird using your thumb. And then, then you could, would move that over to this bird to see how much bigger or smaller one bird is to the next which for me really isn't always apparent. And to, I mean, I can see that one is smaller, one is bigger, but it's really in the act of drawing that I begin to see much more and begin to understand. So that's another reason for to draw is to understand the world around us and, 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 and the way and what we see. Um, so using the pencil to find the horizontal, um, the width here at the bottom of the bird, and then that's the last slide on PowerPoint. That's another of Picasso's dove for the peace movement. Okay, so I'll just start it here. And Okay, so actually one is on the right, one is on the left, but I think that's okay. Um, hopefully you can have a view. So let's go ahead and start to draw together. Um, so I'm going to, let's see. I think a sharp pencil is, is very helpful when you're drawing. Okay, so I'm gonna go down to this one, this one. I think what I'll do is I'll start to apply some, some color um, to this drawing while we're together this afternoon. But um, you can do all of this with pencil and a piece of computer paper. And I, I like to keep my wrist to the, on the page. Um, my hand is down because it's guiding the pencil, um, meaning that the, the hand is more of an anchor. And then for, in terms of a sense of touch, you can press very lightly on the page or go a little bit darker. Okay, so yeah, I really encourage you to feel free to, of course, pick up a piece of paper and pencil and, and draw. Okay, so I'm going to add some color and have this box of watercolors that I've had for a very long time. Um, I'm just going to make sure I have all my tools available to me. I'm at a slightly different angle than I usually am. 
So I just need to reach over to get my paper towels, which are over here. So I'll just reach over for a minute. So I'm looking at this, I'm going to, I'm looking at this image here because the other one I started to work on with watercolor and I'll start to work on this bird here. And I think with painting, especially with watercolor or watercolor pencil, um, you can build up to darks. If you keep it nice and washy and light to begin with, then you can always build up gradually to darker tones. Just kind of wondering if you can see, I'm thinking of turning on the lights in here so you can see a little bit better. So I'm gonna go and do that. Oops. See, it's any better? Feel it? Yeah, okay. I do really like the afternoon light. Michelle gave me a thumbs up. Thank you, Michelle. I love the afternoon light, um, but not if you can't see. And I think establishing the values of light and dark, um, like if I if 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 we're looking at the image on the right here, like it's mid tones, mid values here, and very light here, and then darkest here. So I'm staying away from doing the the wings until later because it's the darkest graphic details of the birds, whereas this is more of a mid tone in here. And then later on, even, even here is very, very dark. So it, I would go there later in the painting. And that might mean actually going over this wash a few times because sort of as a way to get for myself, my bearings, like to understand a little bit of the shape get to know what's happening.
Okay, and then I think we'll I'll go on to working on this bottom bird. Um, and I think when you're painting um, or drawing, that you want to you want to really think about large general shapes and areas first. So as an example, really no matter what um, what it's it's really a way of sorting or organizing information. So it's sort of like um, you know the whole bird is is green, but then we can break it down in terms of their areas where it's lighter green and darker green. Um, and so to start, I'm just going to give it a nice, well, I think, um, you know, wash throughout. And then I can go back and make it darker and lighter in certain areas. It's nice to give a general, I think, base tone um, so that you don't have too many um, lights. I mean, if we also think about the idea of starting on a toned ground for painters in the 1600s and 1500s, then it sort of sets a light. So it's not, um, it's not like we're working off of a very, very bright um, canvas. Then with watercolor, um, you can let it dry, but because we don't really have a lot of time together this afternoon. I'm just gonna go into it while it's still a little bit wet. There's so many things to think about with making a drawing or painting, um, which is why it continuously interests me. I mean, just the idea of mark making of, of how the strokes on this painting, this beautiful painting from the 14th century. There's so many different kinds of markings that we see. So the way you apply the paint, different kinds of brush strokes, different kinds of marks and lines. Um, can be very, I guess, very exciting, very exciting to think about. You know, it's something that I'm constantly curious about, I would say. I'm not sure if it's always exciting, and <laughs> often very challenging, but it's interesting to me. Okay. Usually when I do watercolor, I usually do it on a flat surface because it drips, but I wanted you to be able to see it today. So that wouldn't have been possible. Notice a little bit of yellow in here. Yellowish green on the bottom, whoops. And see, I use paper towels a lot to, to um, lift color up. Um, I think of painting and drawing as very malleable, very pliable. Change it. And I like that about it.
Sometimes you can just kind of drag the color along. If there's a little puddle there, you can just kind of move your brush with it as opposed to picking up more paint. And see where that line goes. Well, it's going a bit down and I want it to go out a bit more. So I'm going to erase that. Come in here. And he has this nice kind of wash. I really am so curious about that, how that came to be, like how he did that or why he left it like that. It looks like the, almost looks like the bird is about to take off. Really very, painting is something everyone can do. It's just so quieting to the mind and you can change it so often. And I've had so many students who didn't think they could draw and it's like anything else, it's just, the more you spend time doing it, the more familiar you become with it, the more you practice. But for some reason, there's an association with it that either you can do it or you can't, which I really feel is very untrue. It's not true. So you can do it, I think. I'm going to go into this one now. Well, you know, I guess I'll go back and do a little beak there. I really liked that little touch. So I'll go back and put that beak on. It might trip because it's vertical. Hmm. All right, we'll leave it for now and I'll come up to this one now. The reason I'm pausing a little bit is because I have this very old set of watercolors and let's see, I have the charts. Oh, here's the chart. I'll look at the chart. I made a chart with all the listing of colors. And that will help me see where the black is. Oh, right, very little black in this one. Okay, it was a dark, dark green. Well, I'll have to substitute black. Oh, I might have black in another set. I think I have black in this. Let's see, yep, black earth is a set. So this is, um. Another watercolor set. It's actually a historic watercolor set that I that I made at Kremer Pigments in New York. I don't know if you can see it. 
their historic colors. Um, so I, I took a workshop and learned how to make the watercolors. And here's the, whoops, yeah, here's the palette. So from this, I can see that there's black on there. So we'll just use the black from there as opposed to the old Holland set from, that's about 30 years old, I think, the old Holland set. <laughs> I'm starting right in with a dark here because that seems very prominent in the painting. I mean, it's taking up most of the bird's wings. And I think that's something that I, I really love about this painting that I hadn't seen before, before this. So fortunately in preparing for today, I, I learned about the painting. And I think something that I like about it is um, how it just really looks like the artist was trying to understand the birds. That it doesn't seem, I guess there's a kind of humble, humbleness about it that I really love. Just seems like it's about pure examination and seems so, I guess, genuine. Genuinely interested in, in, um, in understanding what a bird looks like. Seems a little dark. And also, I think because the shape seems different than what I have here. So I wanna go back before I make any decisions that I can't, you know, any strong decisions about it. I'm gonna just take that tone down a little bit and go back. So I think the shape was a little bit off. So now I can go and layer it a little bit more. Yeah, I think the angle is going more like that, really. It's not so much like that. So that's what didn't quite feel right to me. So I'm gonna use pencil to change that angle. Use a straight edge. Next card. Yeah, I think it's coming down more like that. Okay, let's try that, um, change it a little bit, not much, let's see.
Yes, I could still work on that. I think it was going a little bit quickly before. And I think So, um, as you can see, it's really like anything else, it's just practicing. And I know that if I can do it, that you can too. So I really encourage you to, if you want, of course, you know, try it. So you need a brush or pencil and computer paper, brush, paper, towel, some water. And if you've been joining along, if you're on campus and you've been joining along with your kit, then I hope you're getting some nice, quiet, reflective time to think about shapes and the beauty of birds and the coming of spring. So, um, yeah, so I think I'll turn this over and just thank you so much, everyone. And thank you so much to the museum and to Michelle. And I think I'll turn it back to you, Michelle. Great. Well, I know, Suzanne, thank you so much for that. I think I could sit here for a considerably longer amount of time and sort of watch your hand movements and listen to you talk about what it is that you do, that I find that in and of itself uh, immensely relaxing. I hope our audience has as well. And I think one of the things that marks you out as a really good teacher is that several of the questions that I was jotting down while you were working were things you then turned to the camera and explained. You know, I wondered what paint set you were working. You said you were using an old Holland set that is how many years old? Okay, so I, I'll show it to you um, again. It's, um, I bought it, mm, let's see. Uh, 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 let's see, what year? <laughs> I think it's about 30 years old, Michelle. Yes, I do. Yeah. Um, I bought it at New York Central in New York City. And I remember it just had so many different colors. Um, and um, and the paint is still really, really good. So, yeah. And then the other set, um, yeah, historic watercolors. I took a workshop at Kramer Pigments in New York. Um, and the pigments that are listed in this this watercolor set are um, things like ferrocite, um, lapis lazuli, sodalite, um, bistra, um, um, green earth from Cyprus, salonite green. Yep. Beautiful. Oh, thanks. And I, and I also wondered while you were working and I was watching your hand, so you were explaining how you place your hand um, and sort of rest it on the paper. And then I wondered, I bet she wouldn't do this on an easel normally. And then a moment later you explained that normally you would work on a, on a flat surface, but you're doing it for our benefit so that we can watch you. So to me, those are signs of a someone who is used to being in the classroom and explaining what it is that she's doing. 
And while you were talking, I also got very interested in this Giovannino de Grassi image that you are drawing from. So of course I have to go and look it up and it turns out it's from, which I should have realized just looking at it, what was its purpose? It was a medieval pattern book, one of the most famous. So it is for artists to do exactly what you were showing us tonight. It's for other people to learn to copy so that someone who's never seen a green parrot can do a green parrot. So I just find, I find that, you know, without unintentional, um, unintentional synchronicity of its original purpose and the purpose to which you've been, you've been placing it. I want to remind anyone who's watching, if you have questions, you can put them into the chat and I will let Suzanne know. But I do have a couple of questions of my own that you, you didn't manage to get to. Um, and one of them was, if you know that you are drawing something, you're drawing in pencil, but you know you plan to add color with watercolor later, how much effort do you put into doing the shading in pencil if you're going to be adding color? Oh, that's a good question. I almost never shade if I'm going to use color. Um, I would, for myself, I mean, I think that there are definitely artists who do, um, but I would, I would spend more time with the line work and defining the shape. And in my experience, I've never, I've never regretted spending a long time and it's just line. Um, okay. It's like a mapping, like that then when I work with color, I have a much clearer sense of, of where the color goes and like that. Yeah, but I, I guess the reason that I wouldn't, for myself, I don't use shading before color or for watercolor in particular is because I wonder about the graphite uh, mixing with the pigment and if it would change the pigment. And I noticed since you've mentioned several times that, you know, you're able to sort of fix things and go back that once you realize that the, the angle of the bird at the top was a little bit off, even though you were already working with watercolor, you went back to the straight edge and the pencil to correct it. Yes. Um, yes. I think I did that because I'm, because we're talking in a workshop. I probably would have stayed with the paint and, and because I tend to, to work things out in, in paint often once I start with paint. But I oh, thought, interesting. Yeah, but I thought because um, it was really a drawing workshop that I should, should go back to working with pencil for that. And also the angle that I'm at, um, it's a little tricky because it's um, vertical. And so, oh, right. And, and so I'm looking at the screen this way and my page this way and I'm here. So. It, um, I, I still think that the, the shape, um, let's see. Yeah, I think it goes, it's, it's slightly too horizontal. I think it goes a little bit more down like that. Okay. And I wonder if you could comment on how your approach to this would change if your source material wasn't an image of a bird, but if it was a stuffed or, you know, let's not even say a live bird, let's say it was a specimen of a bird in front of you, how would your approach to it change? Yes. Well, um, I think that working from an image that's on a, on a flat screen um, is challenging because you don't have the, the way, you don't have the three-dimensional form in front of you. So I much prefer working from everything from light, from, from an object or from, a, I, would, I would, that would be very interesting to paint from a stuffed bird. Um, and I think that's one of the interesting things about the subject matter about a bird, of a bird is that birds are flying. And so we, we you know, unless it's a stuffed bird, we, we don't have it in front of us. And so I think it's kind of really interesting because it, it made me think of how the, much the imagination is a part of, of the, the painting process anyhow. But there's so many, um, so many ways that I think one could explore painting birds because of that, because, because they're sort of ephemeral. I mean, I mean they're, they're, they're there, but you know, we don't, they're not still. You know, and that's the right, and that was the yeah the challenge that Audubon had in posing all of these birds to give a full sense of life when in fact it's it's the imitation of life. Mm -hmm. I thought it was interesting that you said you felt there was a certain humility in um, Giovannini uh, Giovannino de Grassi's image that's maybe not there in Audubon. <laughs> um, and could you show us a close up of your your not quite finished but in progress pieces so that everyone at home could see? Oh yes, so there was, um, not sure. Lovely, I love, I love the green parakeet at the lower, um, the lower edge, which 
it probably isn't the same as those green, the whatever they are, the hooded parrots that are so common in Fairfield County, but that's what it's making me think of. Okay, thanks. Thank you. Yeah, and then this was um, another, the other one that I started that I was working on from the John Gould. You mentioned you loved you liked the relationship of the shape of the bird, not just the shape of the bird to the leaf, but you were pointing out the sort of interstitial spaces that you find interesting. Yes, the interspaces in between. Um, the the you know, uh, for example, why is you know he decided to put this bird here, and this bird is much smaller than this bird, um, and so the position on the page I think is very interesting. Um, it's almost like the dominant bird that's that's very that the wings are very dark here and the bird is very very large is on top and just in terms of thinking about the the top of the picture relative to the the lighter smaller birds on the bottom it sets up a, an interesting dynamic that, and and yes i love the the space in between the interspace the negative space all throughout here yeah so we have a, um, a request from a um, someone watching. Jack said he would appreciate a list of today's references. So from that, I'm going to assume that he means the reference material that you've been using. So I recognize that the captions that are on Art Store at the bottom of the screen may be a little difficult for everyone to read. Um, so if you could just remind us what, what two images you've been drawing from today the most. Sure. Um, OK. It's. John Gould, who lived from 1804 to 1881. And this piece is called Lampornis Mango, and it's from 1861. And the second piece, um, so that was the piece that, I, this is this piece. I actually wasn't doing the demonstration from this, but this is the one that I just um, showed you that I did earlier. And then the piece that I've been drawing from today is by, uh, Giovannino, Giovannino de Grassi, um, and um, that's here. And this is the second piece right here. Great. Well, thank you so much, Suzanne. This was enlightening and relaxing all at the same time. Um, I just want to remind anyone who is watching who is inspired by Suzanne's instruction and is working on a bird related project, we would love to see your work. So please send a photograph to us at museum at fairfield.edu. We'd be thrilled to feature it on our website. And again, if you are a Fairfield University student and you send us your bird art by this Friday, we are going to ask Professor Shamlin to judge who deserves a couple of uh, Dunkin' Donuts gift cards to keep your caffeine up in this time of midterms. So I just wanted to thank you all again for watching and we'll look forward to seeing you at our next event. Thanks, Suzanne. Thank you so much, Michelle. Have a good night, everyone.